So let's talk about using GDT in FreeCAD in somewhat this way. Um, we can start by going to our part and you should be able to download this from GrabCAD if you wish to follow along. Uh, so let's start with this part and go through some basics on TechDraw um, in case nobody's used TechDraw before. FreeCAD and TechDraw are things that really made me view the world differently. And speaking of viewing the world differently, I was delighted to see a woman passionately teaching physics. She held out a wheel and let it fall, but then she spun the wheel to show that it doesn't fall when it is spinning. I could hear the students gasp in surprise. For me, there are few joys that compare to seeing the world differently. One of the best and most efficient ways for me to see the world differently is with Brilliant.org. I particularly enjoy seeing the animations of complex concepts made simple. For anyone who enjoys learning by seeing and doing, Brilliant.org is the platform for you. There is new content added monthly and thousands of lessons to choose from. If you are a professional looking to augment your skills, someone who is curious about the world, or a student looking for new ways to study, there is something, no matter who you are. I've dipped my feet into the Infinity course recently, and I've enjoyed exploring the concepts of things that go to infinity. After graduating university, I found I don't have regular practice using math and science principles like I did in my classes, and using Brilliant.org has really been fun. It only takes a few minutes a day to stay sharp and learn a lot of new things. Please go to Brilliant.org slash Joko Engineering Help to try a premium subscription free for 30 days, and the first 200 of you will receive 20% off an annual premium subscription. Uh, first thing, we have to go to the Tektra workbench, right there, and we can insert a default page. And then we have to use the view cube or something similar to make sure that we're looking straight on at our part. If I have a view that's askew like that and I highlight my body and I go to insert my view into my drawing, what you'll find is it inserts an askew view. That's probably not very valuable. So make sure for the accuracy of the drawing that you are looking straight on. Again, I recommend clicking on the view cube. Now you can always highlight your body and click insert view and it inserts a view of the body. If you'd like to do a projection group, you can do that also. Uh, so stand on the body and this button here, insert projection group, and it gives you some options on uh, what projection group you would wish to insert. Maybe I'll do one to the left here and apply that. And then there's my projection group. This is simple enough. You probably don't need an isometric view at all. Now we can start uh, thinking about what kind of uh, GDT features we want to add. Perhaps I'll start by adding a datum feature it would actually be from the balloon uh, tab, right? So I highlight my line that I want my datum to be on and I insert a balloon, which of course defaults to one with a circle around it. We'll change the text to A, of course I want uh, capital A, and instead of a bubble shape, we'll go with a square shape, and then our end symbol, instead of a filled arrow, we'll do a filled triangle. And then you can start to see we have datum A. Now notice I am making this up as I go along. I'm not concerned with the accuracy so much of the drawing because I'm making this up as I go along. I am concerned with showing how to use most or all features uh, for GDT so that if you need to make a GDT drawing, you'll know how. Uh, that is the intent of this video. So we have datum A here, and then maybe we want to establish datum B, and we want to connect it to a dimension, right? Maybe I'll make this center hole my B datum. And to do that, I want to start off by defining the diameter. So we'll define a diameter here. And you'll notice my dimensional format, right? That is ANSI. Let's say you're in Europe and you want to use ISO or something like that. Well, you, we can control that by going to Edit, Preferences, Tech Draw, and uh, we can go to Dimensions, and there we have ISO, 
and ASME dimensions that you can choose from for your dimension standards. So we'll cancel that. I am an ASME guy. My primary knowledge is an ASME Y14.5. But you can use whatever you think is best for you. So maybe we we'll want to add a tolerance on that, right? And we can do so by double clicking on the dimension and we can say, you know, 0.05 and that automatically adds our plus minus 0 0.05. Uh, we can make this a basic dimension, and it automatically gets rid of our tolerance, which is awesome. So for basic dimensions, we just check the box that says theoretically exact. So we can say 0.05, and yep, it automatically gives us an under tolerance there. So this is pretty handy. I really like that. We can also uncheck equal tolerance if we want to do you know, some kind of bilateral thing. Or not bilateral, but uh, unequal rather. So that's how we can manage tolerances. Let's say that that is what we are shooting for for that whole diameter. And then how do we add GDT to that? Well, again, I'll highlight my circle. I'll add a bubble right there. Now I double click on the bubble uh, and we'll say rectangle down here. And now that we're rectangular, we can hold our mouse over this and say customize format label. You can see the GDT on the button there, so it's pretty obvious. First thing we'll do, get rid of my two in the format down here. And I want to add perpendicularity. So we'll add perpendicularity here. And uh, of course, we're supposed to, in our feature control frame, have a vertical line that separates these features. Well, on this, we do shift and we do this little vertical symbol, and that's on our keyboard, right? Shift, and use, it's that vertical thing above the Enter key. And then, uh, maybe we want to do a max material. Uh, we can add in our max material symbol here. Um, you know, I, I, I personally haven't done max much max material with perpendicularity, but I believe it can be done. So we'll add in maybe a tolerance. Of course, the tolerance goes after the max material. Uh, designator, so maybe make that 5,000 what max material condition, add a little space, and then maybe another divider, and we want to make that relative to datum A. So you'll notice I've typed all this in the format, and we get the little preview of what it looks like, but we're not going to update our bubble until we say OK. So I'm going to say OK, and there I have my feature control frame. But I've got two liters, and that's not very nice looking, so I'm going to double click on my balloon, which is now my future control frame. And we're going to say line visible is false, and that will take our liter away. So I've got my dimension here with my tolerance, and then I have my uh, perpendicularity that is added onto this circle. So, so far, we have datum A. We have our perpendicularity, and usually with these kinds of datums, we'd want to have a flatness, right? So we'll add a flatness on here, or whatever you would want for your datum A. And again, double click. Same as before, we're going to make sure that this is rectangular, and then we'll go over here, highlight our three, and replace it with the flatness symbol. There we go. And then vertical, maybe we'll make this flat to 0.01. And then we'll say OK. So we've got our flatness on our datum A. Our datum B is perpendicular to our datum A. Uh, then we need datum C. And so far, we've constrained this face and this circle, meaning that the only thing left to constrain is the rotation. So maybe I'll make this edge my datum C. I can choose maybe a hole here or something like that as well. Depends on how I'm going to use the part and what my intentions are. Uh, so let's say that my intentions are to fix the hole on this face. And of course, you can also run this off of a dimension if you want the center plane between these faces. But I think having a datum C on this one face is nice and simple. So grab our bubble. Now this is going to highlight one um, potential issue, right? If I want to run my datum off of this face that is angled, and I choose square, and I choose filled triangle, right? I can be sideways, I can be vertical. It's not going to try to match 
the angle that this line is. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it's something to be aware of. I think you would probably call that a limitation. Our text, of course, will be datum C, and it'll say OK. What else? Obviously, you would want to fill all this in with uh, dimensions as you go. Maybe we'll want to do a stacked feature control frame. How, right? How would we handle that? Well, I would first start off, I got a little bit ahead of myself there. I'll highlight this circle. We'll add in a diameter. And we have multiple holes here. So how do I cover multiples? We will, first off, maybe assign our tolerance. Uh, maybe, yeah, 20 thou. We'll say OK to that. And then with this dimension, under Format Spec, maybe I'll say 4x, and that adds a little 4x in here. So we edit this menu, we got our 4x in here. Now I can add my future control frame, and that's saying that my future control frame applies to all of these holes as well as my dimension. So we'll again, select this hole, add a bubble, double click, make sure that this is going to be a rectangle and that our uh, line visible is false. Say OK, and then go over here to our format labels. I'm going to get rid of my five. Maybe I want to make this a position. So we'll say position, commonly called true position, which should be right here. And after adding our position symbol, we'll add a little vertical. Maybe we'll give this a max material as well. Maybe we'll position that to 5,000 and then another vertical. In fact, I've always been fascinated with zero uh, at max material because that allows you to divvy up however you want to, your size of your hole tolerance with your position of your hole tolerance. And uh, it gives the machinist a little bit more freedom with the same amount of total tolerance as if you can afford it. So that I, I thought, I've always thought that that was cool, but we'll, we'll give this 5,000 just for demonstration. We're going to say A, vertical, B, vertical, C. We've added our datums. And what's kind of cool, uh, th this of course is against the rules, but you can just keep on adding datums if you want to do it wrong. And <laughs> it'll just keep on adding your feature control frames, right? You can't even do that in SOLIDWORKS. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can add, um, even though it's pointless. So we've got our ABC added. We have our position, max material condition. I think I'm looking okay there. And I'll say okay to that, right? But what if we care about the cylindricity of the holes or something like that? Or the perpendicularity, that might be a good one. Maybe there's some application where we'd want to do that. So I will highlight this hole again. We'll add in a bubble. Our GD. Same as before. Rectangle. We're going to say false on our line visible. And with that, we can head over to T symbols. We're going to say uh, perpendicularity. vertical, or maybe to 1,000, and we'll make that to datum A, right? Something like that. And that's a way that we can deal with stacked frames. All right, next. There are some unique symbols with profile of a surface. And maybe we want to do, you know, profile of the surface between points because that could ostensibly come up for some people. So let's cover that. Uh, that's how we've done some stacked frames. Let's do profile of a surface. And again, we'll choose bubble. I'll move this up here with its feature control frame. Well, didn't mean to do that though. There we go. We'll go rectangular false actually no this one is going to be true uh, because I don't have another dimension for that so maybe we wanted to add profile of the surface um, we'll say here get rid of our seven profile of a surface control 
vertical 0 0.05 vertical again a vertical b vertical c and that's all well and good but maybe we want to do something unequal uh, we'll say unequally disposed tolerance in the the that's that's of course is our circle u symbol here and maybe we want the outside to be 0 0.001 and the rest of the tolerant zone to be somewhere else oh and i split up my original there so i'll re-add my five I can add spaces if I want it to be a little bit more spread out. Uh, so that's how we would do an unequally disposed tolerance from A, B, C. So we're going to say OK to that. Ooh, that's a long frame. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I don't want to do it that way. We'll come back in here, of course. So if I want to edit this, right, I highlight my future control frame, and I go back into this customized format label button, and I'll get rid of the spaces to try to make that a little bit narrower, so we're going to say OK, and that does make it a little bit more manageable. But let's say that we only want this profile to be between a few points. Well, what I can do is maybe highlight this point, and we'll make this my point A. So I double click on my bubble, we're going to say none, we're going to say text is A, and I think that's how they have it uh, formatted in a lot of as me and ISO standards, we'll highlight this point here. We'll make a bubble. We'll double click B right here. Or I don't know if you have datum A and point A. Maybe I'll make this uh, Z. And then I'll make this, you know, Y. And make sure that this has. Yeah, so I think that's how it looks like in most standards that would probably fly or at least be understandable by someone reading it. But then I have to say that this applies to the space that lies within Z and Y. We have to use that little double arrow format. So how do we do that? Well, I'll highlight this circle, add another bubble, and we're going to say none again and false for line visible. Yeah, that looks good. And then we'll go back to our GDT here. I'm going to say Z. And then we'll, under other, there's our double symbol, right? And you also have hold depth and countersink and a few other, you know, plus minus, a few other really nice dimensions to have uh, in those. So you should have most or all the dimensions you're looking for in here. And then Y. So Z. Y. And that'll probably fly for anyone who's needing to reference the drawing and understand it. So we're adding GDT to all the things, right? And of course, you're going to need basic dimensions if you're going to do GDT. And, you know, maybe we should just do some, a few other drafting elements that might be handy. So let's cover basic dimensions here. I want this to be called out as a radius. So I come through here, and instead of diameter, we're going to make sure that this is a radius under type, and that adds that R, and it cuts the dimension in half. But of course, I want this to be a basic radius because I don't want a tolerance associated to this. So I'll double click on my dimension, check theoretically exact, and there we have it. So of course, I'll need to add some positional dimensions for the nominal locations of these holes. To do that, I'll add uh, both circle center lines. Of course, I have to have some things highlighted. So I'll choose this and this and this. And all I need to choose is three. And that defines a circle, right? Three points define a circle. So I'll add that. And then there's how I get my bolt circle. And that could be a, an important thing to add. And I can choose angles, of course, right? Maybe I want to define the angle on this wall. I can insert an angle dimension. And it really does update pretty nicely. So I can show how askew this wall is and so on. But either way, of course, you want to have your drawing be fully defined, which I don't have it fully defined here yet. Uh, but I think I have shown an adequate amount of GDT that you would be able to continue to add whatever GDT you want based on viewing this worked example. That is my goal, at least. So uh, hopefully, that works for you. If this video was helpful, 
please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.